Welcome everybody to this week's live and today's topic is story time about me getting over my breakup where I was the asshole. So the reason why I wanted to share this is because oftentimes like I can share like tips and tricks for getting over breakups but nothing really lands as deeply as someone's real life story. So I hope that you, if this is applicable to your situation, that you can get the cheat codes and downloads that you need um, from my experience. So oftentimes we think that like it's harder to get over the breakup where the other person is the asshole. And that's pretty much true in my experience. It's because like if the relationship is more toxic, it's just more to process and harder to get over. Um, but there's also the flip side of like the one being the asshole. So how was I the asshole in this relationship? Well, basically I was acting, I was avoidantly attached. And so what happened was um, in this relationship, it was an on and off relationship. And I was the one instigating all of the off periods because of my avoidant nature. And at one point, um, like I realized that we were on and off. Like I had, I started to kind of hone in on like okay so we're on and off and this is probably because of my like attachment style um so at one point we were in we were relating in the on and off fashion but we had this awareness of like why that was however we were still doing it so this is one of the key things awareness can be really helpful but sometimes awareness it just isn't enough to like break the pattern so I was in this on and off cycle, I had awareness around like, you know, how to do it with attachment styles. And just a quick primer on attachment styles for those who don't know, um, it's basically the idea that our modeling of relationships, we learn them in, ch in childhood. And it's basically our strategies for gaining love. If we learned that love was inconsistent, we basically had a strategy of clinging. If we learned that love was basically um, unavailable, um, we learn how to like become very self-reliant and become avoidant versus if we learned like that love wasn't safe that would be like more disorganized and you know if you learn that love was like consistent and reliable then that'd be secure that's what a attachment styles is in a nutshell so I basically had a combination of anxious and avoidant but in this relationship I was showing up as avoidant and that's another thing is that like your attachment style isn't like a fixed thing. It can show up differently um, in different relationships. And part of why I wasn't seeing um, my role in this on and off cycle for so long is because I didn't see myself as an avoidant, attach att uh, an avoidant attacher. I saw myself as more of an anxious attacher. So once I s realized that, um, I was still engaging in this, in this pattern. So what it actually took to break this pattern was I joined um, this coaching container at the time and I was talking about um, like the cycle that we were in and basically as I was talking about it it just became clear to me like, like reflected in the coaching containers their faces back it's just like oh yeah this is really dysfunctional even though I'm aware that's dysfunctional it's still happening so I need to do something differently in order to shift this so that's what a container can do it can often um, like hold space for you to like kind of look at something where where before you might not be able to look at it so so yeah like I realized I had to do something differently to change it and so I like shortly after that uh, coaching I kind of got down my journal and I just really started to analyze like okay, what instigates like the on periods and what instigates the off periods and then slowly I was able to put together like okay, this is what the on periods are like, this is what the off periods are like. And then I realized that part of it was like my inability to like, I would separate out the good and the bad. So when it was good, the relationship was be going, and it was bad, I would call it off. And I couldn't integrate good and bad together into one holistic whole. So once I saw like what actually um, was instigating the on and off periods, I was able to to really say, okay, we really, really need to stop this. Like it's not healthy um and it's interesting because we did have a no contact period before um but that didn't actually like break the cycle 
So two things about that. One, the no contact period we had, I think it was too short. Um, now I'm of the opinion that at least six months, no contact period, if you've been dating less than six months, and at least a year if you've been dating a year or more. So we had a no contact period before, but you know, it was it didn't wasn't long enough to really stick in the new changes. As well as um, I think we still had stuff to learn. There's there's kind of be a judgment on like, you know, toxic, unhealthy on and off things like, you know, that's just a toxic relationship, but like, and I'm not saying it wasn't unhealthy, but also we were still learning and like, I still got valuable experiences from all the on and off period. So I don't necessarily regret that in its in, of itself. So I think it's really important to like get rid of like this moralism around like making like the right or wrong choices in relationships because it's all a learning experience. So yeah, um, in the coaching container, I finally got the insights I needed to like, okay, I really, really need to like break this cycle. So that's basically what I did. And then um, because we had the no contact period before, I decided to continue being friends. Um, and this time we just were, were just friends. And for a while, like that worked out pretty well until I noticed myself like having like um, feelings again. And then I was like, oh no, not this again. <laughs> So at that point, I instigated like, like a six months no contact period. And basically, in that period, like, that actually is what it took to kind of like break like that cycle. Now, this is where, like, after that, the, the six month no contact period, that's where it kind of um, got interesting, where, this, where the tides kind of turned because Originally, I was the one being a boring person, like I was the one always instigating like um, the no contact, right? And then after, um, but after the, the six month no contact period, the, the, the tides kind of reversed because I, I didn't actually feel like super negative really during the no contact period. And I think part of that was because I expected to be friends again. So that's the thing. It's like, I don't think being friends with your ex after a breakup is wrong. Um, I'm friends with a lot of my exes, but it can be really tricky territory because um, it can maintain some of the more maladaptive attachment patterns. Let's just say that. So, or not necessarily maladaptive, but like, um, yeah, I guess like it can keep you stuck in certain attachment patterns. So I expected to be friends like after the no contact period. And what happened was like my ex was kind of like wishy-washy and it wasn't really explicit that they didn't want to be friends with me but and so I had to go through this period of like really reading between the lines and being like oh okay like they actually are not interested in being friends and so at this point this was when the, the tide shifted from like essentially like I was the one maintaining the distance like during our relationship but now it's now it was their turn to maintain the distance and that's like when everything shifted for me. That's when my actually my anxious attachment turned on. So what I realized was that like this whole time where I thought like I was, cause you know, because I felt like um, not that heartbroken during the six month no contact period. I thought like, you know, whatever, like I got through this breakup really easily, it's fine. But what actually happened was that like, um, because there was like the subconscious attachment still remaining like I could part of myself felt, still felt safe wasn't actually feeling the impact of like the severing of the tie so like when they had their turn to reject me quote unquote then that's when I felt like the attachment being threatened and then all of like the inner child stuff coming up so I first what I had to do is like when I realized that they didn't actually want to be friends with me after the no contact period I had to like go through um, cause I felt like betrayed and what betrayal is, is essentially like a, um, it's when your expectations don't match like the reality. So I expected to be friends and that didn't happen. And so I felt betrayed. And so part of that was like feeling the feelings and like letting the, them like kind of, you know, do their thing and like pass through. Um, and so that was one thing. And then another thing was that like, once I, once I realized like this whole avoidant attachment thing, it was all like, even though I thought I was being like super independent and like, I wasn't super attached to this relationship necessarily. Like that was actually, it's like, 
the thing with avoidant attach attachment is like if you look at it the literature it's like the, the child is maintaining like this feeling of independence but deep down they do still feel like the anxiety of not being connected so avoidant attachment is really kind of like a way of maintaining the string so you have an optimal level of distance it's like not too far away so that otherwise you won't have safety but not too close because then you won't feel the fear of rejection so avoidant attachment is just really like a subconscious like manipulation of the the distance that you have with your partners right and so once they kind of like stop that pattern of they, they either went they're the one who became distant then all of my inner child stuff came up so basically I, had to, I did a lot of theta healing on myself to heal like those inner child fragments that were um, still attached to my ex as well as um, another part of transmitting this breakup was was kind of like getting there was like a bit of a limbo I didn't understand there was a lack of information of like on his end of like what was going on with them and when there's a lack of information our brain like tries to figure out what's going on and if it can't it just kind of ends up in like a loop so part of that was also like filling in those gaps so let's say I couldn't talk to him directly um but like my brain still wanted to know like what was going on so I did some like connecting like to his higher self and basically got the download like you know that they still care about you but you know you hurt them so they need space it's like okay well that makes sense to me and now my brain can rest easy because it has that information so even if you um are not really practiced or believe in connecting to higher self or whatever like you can also do an exercise where you just kind of imagine from their perspective like what's going on um or kind of like even have a conversation with them and then you talk as them to kind of like ground in what their perspective of the situation may be if you don't actually have a dialogue with them so yeah like i did a lot of like um data healing on myself i also did, cleared a lot of like scarcity beliefs um around like you know they're the only one who could like love me and that kind of thing um like even though i didn't believe that consciously like subconsciously part of me did believe that so um yeah and so but then i noticed like it was still a bit sticky um so that's when i went to my data healer about it and essentially um like a really pivotal piece in getting over this breakup was downloading beliefs around um independence so essentially what avoidant attachment is it's kind of like a false independence it's like you know you have like this air of like you know I, I don't care like you do your thing I'm good in my own bubble but it's also like you still need to kind of control people's distance in order to feel safe it's like the avoidant child is like trying to m maintain an air of like not being too inconvenient to their caregivers so the caregivers will not feel like they're too much and they'll stick around right so so part of it is just like it's a false independence so part of our with a wooden attachment part of our psyche is like stuck in like this false independence so with my data healer what happened is like we downloaded true independence so we've kind of shifted this belief of part of why i was still stuck is because my part of my inner child aspect was like clinging on to my ex in order to feel like they could be independent so now my data healer downloaded beliefs for me like you know i know how to be independent without being codependent or I know how to live my life without my ex, et cetera. Like all these beliefs, uh, this um, that basically grounds more into like being independent, like tr like true independence. So after we did, I did that session. Then like that just basically shifted like the bulk of it. Like I felt like it was like complete. Um, like and so that was really good to have like that like that last piece. But it wasn't like so. So yeah, that was like the last major piece in getting over this breakup. But um, another thing was that a piece around identity. So so recently I moved um, from Alberta to Vancouver. And, you know, in this process, it's like a lot of shifting of like the old into the new. And so in this limbo period of like my old self and my new self, um, I noticed like as I was transitioning into like you know settling more into Vancouver meeting new friends here etc that like 
it just felt like more further and further away like my ex was just like kind of a version part of the old me and so part of like getting a breakup is like a natural death and rebirth cycle because the version of you that was with your ex is that's an old version of you and like that person that version of you needs to in a sense die in order to like come out new the version of you that it's like that has integrated like all of that so yeah so that was the last piece um it's just kind of like letting the transition like be embodied so i like, i wouldn't be surprised if there's the thing with getting over breakups is that like it gets fainter and fainter and fainter like the pieces that you that are needed to be like um uh, transmuted but like essentially um so i wouldn't be surprised if there's like still like fainter layers coming up but like it just feels lighter and lighter each time